one of the tenets of tidy data was that each cell should contain one value. If you look at the NHANES data from the NHANES package, you'll notice this variable HH income, which has a range of household income for each given individual. So here I sampled three individuals and their household income. And you'll notice that this variable potentially violates one of that tenets of tidy data because it actually contains two values, one of which represents the lower range and one which represents the upper range. And if you wanted to compute something like uh, the average of those two, like the mean, for example, you'd have to first separate out those values into separate columns. And so the question I have for you is if we wanted to extract the upper and lower bound of each of those household income categories, maybe because you want to calculate the mean afterwards, how would we go about doing that? Would we be spreading or would we be gathering? And it's a little bit of a trick question because remember that we're not reshaping the data in the sense that we're not changing the number of rows and the number of columns. What we really want to do is split that one column separate that one column into two columns. And the way we do that is using the separate function. So if you've started with NHANES, selected the ID and the household income variable, slice just the third to the fifth row such that there's three rows, the way you would then do it is to use the separate function. And the first argument in the separate function is the variable that you want to act on, that you actually want to separate. And the next argument is a set of, is a character vector, which contains the names of the columns you actually want to create. So in this case, the variables that we wanted to create were HH low and HH high to signify the low and high values of household income. So note that separate splits one column into multiple columns based on a separator. And the default is for a separator, the separate function to uh, use anything that's not a number or a character, uh, or, I mean a number or a letter uh, as kind of a separator. And that's why even with the default settings, it was able to recognize that we wanted to split on the dash uh, or the minus sign between the two numbers. However, if you wanted to use a different separator or there was a certain separator like a space that you wanted to ignore, you could manually supply the separator to the separate function. One important thing to note here is that we had to actually specify the names of the new columns that we create. And what this means is that we actually need to know in advance how many columns will be generated. Because if we supply two names here and there happens to be a dash uh, or two dashes with three numbers in between, we would get an error because we only supplied two names and the separate function was expecting three values back. On the other hand, let's say that your data frame had separate columns for the lower and upper bounds of household income and you wanted to combine them into a single column. The way you would do this is using the unite function, which is basically the opposite of the separate function. So whereas the separate function uh, required you to provide the column that you want to split, followed by a character vector containing the columns that you want to generate, the unite function asks you to provide the column that you want to newly create, followed by the columns that you want to uh, unite. And unlike the separate function, the unite function isn't expecting any character vectors. You can just provide it the names of the uh, columns kind of unquoted. But in the unite function, you do have to provide it a separator because if you don't provide it a separator, it doesn't know how you want the elements to be united, like how, what should be the uh, you know uh, thing that it inserts to separate out the lower and upper bounds. And so by telling it here that I want the separator to be a dash, it knows that when it combines HH low with HH high to insert a dash in between those values. So unite is useful for combining multiple columns into one column based on a separator.
Uh, can you think of another example where separating or uniting might be useful? Let's say that you had um, separate columns for month, day, and year, and you wanted to combine those. How would you do that? Would you separate or unite? So the information you want is already in multiple columns and you want it back in a single column. And so since you're uniting, the function you would use is unite. Let's say you didn't know about the Luberdate package and so you actually didn't know how to deal with dates. If you knew that the way your dates were structured were, let's say, month, dash, day, dash, year, you could use the separate function to separate out the components of the month, day, and year um, into separate columns. So that's kind of a common use case. You know, it doesn't come up much for me because I pretty much use the Luberdate package when I'm working with dates, but it's a useful way to think about when unite and separate you know, might be useful uh, is in problems that resemble the same problems we deal with when working with dates.